Hey friends, Kevin here, and today I'm going to take you through some ads on Craigslist. We're going to look at a couple of these, and I'm going to let you determine whether they're scams or whether they're real camper vans that are for sale. Now, we could use any vehicle for an example, uh, any kind of van, any brand that you may be looking for, or any other vehicle that you may be looking for as far as doing van life, but I'm going to use a road trek as an example. If you follow this channel, you know I have a minivan. I also have a road trek. And as a matter of fact, my road trek came from a Craigslist ad. But you have to know what to look for so you don't get burned by some of these common scams. So let's get right into this. So we're going to do a quick search here. I'm doing 100 miles from this area of Tennessee that I'm in. And we're just going to type in road trek. You know, there's a 2005 model for $57,000 because road treks can be expensive. Any of these custom vans are selling right now for about $130,000 new decked out. Here's one 15 years old, 57,000. But look at this one over here, a 1998 model, which is actually newer than mine for $1,400. So let's take a look at this real quick see see how this appears to us it's in west knoxville now i did this search based out of east tennessee road track class b 200 model they make a 170 a 190 and a 210 but they also made some 200 models although they're a little bit rare low mile still looks new chevy chassis with a v8 stored indoors reply to hmiller961 at gmail.com. Is there anything about this that strikes you as odd at this point? I can tell you what strikes me as odd at this point. One is looking at these pictures because I can't tell. Craigslist really doesn't blow pictures up, unfortunately. This is the size that you, you tend to get. But I'm pretty certain that's not a Tennessee license plate. So that, that would be the first thing that's going to come across as odd to me. And the second thing would be this price. This price is insanely low. I can tell you right now, a 1998 road trek in any kind of shape is probably going to be fifteen dollars to $20,000. This is the first thing makes me suspicious. The picture doesn't quite match up either, but so be it. So let's go in here and let's expand our, our search a little bit here. Let's take this up to 250 miles. We're going to scroll down a little bit. Now that's the ad that we just looked at. And you can see the prices of these other ones, 53,000 Oh, there's one for 6700 but it's a 93 model. So we're not getting anywhere into, into the right price range. But here's what you want to look at on this. $1,400 and it's located in Knoxville. Oh, but $1,400 and it's located in Atlanta. And it appears to be the same van. So if we click on that ad couple of different pictures and it's the same person so that would be your second third thing that would obviously not look right you can't have the same van in different cities so one of the tips I would give you when you're looking for something on Craigslist is expand your search a few hundred miles and see if the same ad comes up in different large metro areas because that's going to be pretty much a sure sign that it is going to be a scam but you know what maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm incorrect and for 1400 bucks i can tell you i would pick another one of these up in a heartbeat why well, i would pick this one up and i would sell mine so you know what let's contact this person and see what happens so here's the email i sent of course my information is blanked out we're sending it to this fine person 
very simple. They're not giving a lot to go on. Hi, money in hand, ready to move on your road trek. May I ask why you are selling it? Is there anything with it, you know, wrong with it that I need to fix before driving it back across the country? Where can we meet and do this deal? We fire off that email. We'll see what kind of response we get from this one in a moment. Let's keep searching now. But hey, this is stuff in the East. Let's see what's happening out in the West. So we're going to change this down here. Let's do 100 miles from this zip code, which is somewhere in Arizona. Let's see what we come up with. Oh, look, there's one for $1,400, amazingly. That looks like the same van. Why, it's in the uh, Tempe, Arizona, South Phoenix area. Let's see, is this going to be our same person? It is. Imagine that. I know there's been a lot of talk of cloning humans, but I didn't know they could clone vans. So we're done with that. Let's let's kind of keep looking, looking and see what we come up with in the West. 2008 model, $50,000. 2004 GM chassis, $11,009. Hey, for a 2004, I would certainly pay $11,000 because that is going to be a van that I would say would easily go for twenty-five dollars to $30,000. So if you could pick it up for eleven dollars even if it had some problems, it would definitely be worth picking up. And if there was money to be made, I would find my way across the country. You know, if you could save enough money, it would be worth flying across the country. Let's expand our search here just a little bit. And our $11,000 van that's in Phoenix, amazingly enough, it's also $6 cheaper in Tucson. Let's check out one of these ads and see what they're saying about this. Because they are using the exact same pictures, slightly different gibberish. But hey, maybe they're just listing it in, in a couple of big cities in Arizona trying to get more eyeballs on their app. So that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Let's take a look at this ad a little bit closer. 64,000 miles, generator, AC, blah, 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 fridge, lots of storing, wheel, we're going to more. This ad, 64,000 miles, generator, blah, blah, blah. Nice maple wood, new Pirelli tires, blah, blah, blah. Ask any info. I believe I will. I have to contact them through Craigslist, which is going to protect me and protect them until they find out that I'm a real live person, a real live buyer also. So simple little email. Hey, I'm a few hundred miles away, but I'm interested in your 2004 road track. It looks like you've taken really nice care of it. Looks great from the picture, 64,000 miles. Is there anything I need to have done to it before going on a long trip? May I ask why you are selling it? Have money in hand? Where can we meet up to do this deal? Of course, my name is Kevin. Some people, you know, older people, so this happened a lot when I was a kid. I would, it would end up mistakenly be Calvin. So, hey, I've answered to a lot of things in my life. So I'll be Cal today. Okay, now we've gotten an email response back from each one of these ads. This $11,000 one, which would certainly be a steal. Let's see what kind of response we got. And here's their response. May I have your email? Cause it seems I cannot see it in here. I could drop you some pics and info with the van. Yeah, you could do that, or you could simply have replied with the answers to the questions that I ask, which you didn't do. And seeing this ad in a couple places, am I certain this is going to be fraud? Yeah, 99.99%. They're going to try to take me out of the Craigslist system, get my personal information, starting with an email, and... Of course, they're going to ask for some more information too. And then they're going to go into some type of hard luck story slash sales pitch that they need to be believable. And would you like an example of that? Because we have one. 
Remember our $1,400 one in Knoxville that's also in Atlanta, that's also on the other side of the country? We got a response from that. Now, I don't know how well you can see this depending on your the device you're on, and I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I am going to hit the important points here for you. First of all, somebody in the military, technical sergeant, blah, 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 149th fighter wing. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm the second owner of this 98 Road Trek. This camper belonged to my father who recently passed away. He was the original owner. It's in great shape, blah, blah, blah. She's going to tell me all about it. Everything is perfect. Clear title, no loans, no liens, nothing like that. This deal is ready to do. I'm in the Air Force, and last week I was deployed to, from Texas, or wherever she was, yes, from Texas. Remember, the van was in Arizona. But now she's deployed from Texas to Alaska. Golly gee whiz. Making final preparations before deploying to Afghanistan for a year. Hey, if you catch up on the news, we're pulling most people out of there. We're not sending more people in there for the most part. But maybe Helen hasn't seen the news lately. I hate to sell it, but there's no one to drive it, and I don't want to store it for a year. It's currently stored in San Antonio at Kelly Field Annex, Joint Base San Antonio, which used to be Kelly Air Force Base. And actually, if you look all this up, she's got the terminology, she, he, whoever's behind this, has all the terminology right. There is a 149th. The names of these places are correct. This is, this is really well done. And the English, everything is really well done also. It's not some, some of that chopped up gibberish you get from someone that speaks English as a second language. Very well done. And it will be delivered from there through our military moving company. I can deliver to the van one time in a year for free anywhere in the USA. I was in the military. Any of you guys and gals in the military? Did you ever have that? As one of your benefits that you can send a vehicle anywhere in the United States for free in a year? Yeah, I didn't think so. The price I'm asking is $1,400 and the reason I'm selling it way below market value is because I don't have time for negotiations. Yeah, I can see somebody selling something for one-tenth because they don't want to negotiate. The financial part will be managed by eBay. Now remember, we didn't start this thing on eBay. We started this thing on Craigslist. So eBay has jack nothing to do with this. And here's where the scam starts. Will be managed by eBay and you will get a five-day inspection period before committing to buy the camper. Using eBay, we're both 100% covered during the steps of the transaction. They will hold your money until you receive the camper, and I get paid only if you decide to keep the camper after this five-day inspection period ends. If you find it's not right for you, you can simply return it at my expense. Yeah, it's about a thousand bucks to ship one of these across the country. And eBay will send you a full refund immediately, but I'm confident you'll be satisfied with the camper. If you're serious about buying the camper, please send your name, address, blah, 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 phone number, and I'll get everything started as soon as possible with eBay. They will contact you right away with all the details of the transaction and will explain the entire process better. Thank you and God bless. Now, I can tell you where this is going to go because I have dealt with this before. Two, three, four years ago, I'm amazed the same thing is going out, but hey, as long as they can find new victims, fine. Here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a letter with the right logo and everything on it, an email that's going, and I guarantee you that other person, this is why they wanted my email address right off the bat to take me out of that Craigslist system so they could send me the same kind of crap and the same information. You're going to get a big eBay logoed email that's going to be very professional. And it's going to explain their car buying service and how you are covered. Now, of course, the way you're going to do this is you're going to go and buy gift cards. You're going to give eBay the numbers off those gift cards after you buy them, bring them home, scratch them off, give them all the codes and everything. 
And you're going to have all of this professional looking stuff telling you that how it works and eBay is going to guarantee everything. Except that email didn't come from eBay. eBay has nothing to do with it. And as soon as you take and scratch a gift card and you give someone else the number, it's gone. It's not reversible. Your money is gone. You will never get it back. That's the way these things work. But they're going to be very slick with this. And one thing they will often include is they will include, usually big, bold, right in the header, they will include a telephone number for eBay itself. One of the main telephone numbers. So you know it's legit. And the way this is going to work is this simple. If you look this number up, telephone number, to see whether it's a real eBay number, it is. However, if you were to try to talk to someone at eBay through this phone number, you're going to be on hold for 30 minutes or an hour or maybe an hour and a half. So maybe you even pick up the phone and you dial this number and it's really eBay. And that puts you at ease a little bit and you think this is the way this stuff works and you're out however much money it is on a vehicle. In this case, you could kiss your $1,400 goodbye. In the other case, you know, you're talking 11,000 because hey, it's all profit, whatever they can get from you, it's all profit. And let me make this clear once again, once you give away the information on a gift card, anyone can use it. It's over. It's done with. It's the same and it's not traceable in any realistic way that you're ever going to get any help from any authorities. It's the same as if you took a handful of these that you bought and you dropped them out on a city street somewhere. Whoever picks them up can use them. It's that simple. You may be thinking, hey, I'm too smart to fall for that. Well, good for you. And I would hope that I was too smart to ever fall for anything. But I guarantee you people do fall for this and they fall for this stuff every single day. Because these are what thieves, these are what con artists, con men do. That's what the con stands for, confidence. They're trying to earn your confidence. And they only need to earn a little bit of it because what they're banking on is your own personal greed. You think you found this deal that no one else has found. You've got this deal and you've gotten lucky you, you've gotten to it first. Of all the people that seen it, you've gotten to it first. Or you're thinking, hey, I'm just, you know, my, I, it's time for something good to happen to me. I never, I never look into deals like this. This is what happens to other people. And this time, I'm going to be the one to look into this deal. I'm not going to miss it. Whichever one of those scenarios that you want to play out in your head, that's fine. But that's how people get burnt with these scams. And it doesn't have to be one of these camper vans that you're going to use for van life. It can be any product. But it's generally going to be a high-end product. It happens with any kind of automobiles. It happens through eBay's own system. It happens through Craigslist. It happens through Facebook Marketplace. It happens through all types of things online. Does that mean you shouldn't buy a vehicle online? No, it doesn't. I bought several vehicles online from complete strangers and I have come out fine every time. But I did my due diligence and I did my inspections in person. And that's the way it ended up working out. You know, there's so many voices that go off in people's heads, mine included, when you run across something that you think is just going to be some great, awesome deal. It's human nature. And that's what any of these people play on. You're my whoever's human nature and especially people like myself people like you who are good people good-hearted people and we want to see and believe the best in everybody unfortunately it doesn't always work out that way 
And if you want to know why these same things go on again, this, this crap that's in this particular email is the same thing that I saw going on again three or four years ago. If, uh, if I can find my other emails or if she responds again, because I did reply to this, if she responds again with she or he, whoever's hiding behind that computer, I'll, I'll update it in a future video, but, but I guarantee it's going to go the same way. It's going to be that really professional looking email. And for those of you that don't know a lot about computers and the internet and, and different things, that's all right. It's just that I ran and was involved in businesses that I had to deal with this and internet security and stuff for a long time. I'm talking about since the very early days of this stuff. So I have seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of scams over the years in all different areas, all different arenas of online doing business online. So yeah, I can usually spot, spot any of this stuff pretty well. But again, if you just stick to the basics, if you find something that looks like a deal is too good to be true, expand that search area. See if you're finding that listing more than once. If you want to contact the people, contact the people. But again, when you're getting stuff like this back as your reply, stories that just don't make a lot of sense. And it's always some tear jerking something. My father, son, husband, whatever, just passed away. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just trying to get rid of this thing. And this person using the military angle and all that, you know, being transferred to Alaska. But that, that takes it out of the equation. Now they have the, re there's a, the reason. There's a reason you can't contact me in the continental United States anymore. Because I'm serving my country and I'm in Alaska. Now let me tell you a little story on why this works and why this continues to work. And why a lot of these scams for a lot of money, thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, different online scams, why they work and continue to work. It's because when the people get shafted, they don't even attempt to do anything about it because of embarrassment. They don't want to look like a complete fool to their friends and their family. So... A lot of times they just eat this stuff. It is a loss. It is a horrendous loss for them financially. And they will go on with it. And even contacting the authorities, quite honestly, nothing is going to happen most of the time. And these people doing this stuff, they know this. They know there's very little chance of, of actually being caught. That's why they do this over and over and over again. And on any of these scams, regardless of what, what kind of online scam it is for vans or anything else, probably for every 10 that happen, there's probably one that gets reported. I guarantee this is one of the most underreported crimes that you could possibly think of. I live in a fairly rural place and I was in a bank one day and I grew up with the guy and I stopped in, we're, we're chatting in his, his office who works at the bank and we were talking about different things that happen and people coming in with these checks, they've gotten into these deals online and they've gotten these cashier's checks and they think they've hit it big and they you know, they already have the money spent in their head and you know, they come to the bank to deposit this check and the bank officials are trying to tell them, we need to slow you down, we need to put a hold on this a little bit and the people are swearing up and down, they are 100% confident that they have not been involved in any kind of scam. And he's telling me this stuff, and I said, yeah, I imagine that happens two or three times a year here. And he starts laughing, and he reaches over, and he opens up a drawer, a file cabinet drawer, and he pulls out a folder that's about four inches thick and drops it on the desk in front of me. And he said, that's in the last six months. Now, again, this is a small rural bank in a town of a few thousand people. And that many people have gotten involved, have been involved in online scams. So don't get overconfident and think that it can't happen to you. But if you get any kind of negative vibe, 
anything else, go to somebody else. Go with somebody with some real experience. If you don't know anybody with some real experience, contact me. I'll be happy to look at a deal for you and, and keep you from making some, some horrible mistake. But let me know down, down in the comments below, you know, have you had good luck buying stuff online, bad luck buying stuff online, especially if you've dealt with, with vehicles. Do you happen to know someone that's gotten in involved in one of these scams and lost money we can all learn from each other a little bit and also let me know down in the comments if you want me to do updates and other videos like this and show you other examples of online scams and ways people can lose money when they're trying to buy again their van life dream van or any other any other type of vehicle and we'll talk soon